What was kind of the plan going into that back half of the game? More of a guard heavy lineup. What was what was the plan there at the end? Yeah, definitely been a lot of that. You know, I obviously was sharp. Um, these games are tough in a lot of ways, and uh, we're not an excuse program. Uh, I believe Sharp will play professional basketball, and in professional basketball, you got to play defense outside the lane too. So he's really working at it. And um, you know, I thought in his minutes tonight, um, you know, he gets a double double basically if he gets his normal minutes, gets ten rebounds, and played really hard. But um, it's definitely a chess game, and um, I'd like to get to the point where we can impose our will and play our bigs together. We just haven't proven we can do that. Y'all are at the games; you see it. And um, so they spread us out a little bit, and um, we just got to continue to work on that, you know. And when we get uh, Musa, it's just going to be even more just the, the size we have. We're going to have to figure out a way. But these these teams that play five out, these teams that have post guys that shoot threes, I mean, it's it's an issue. Uh, we work on it every day. We just got to continue to get better at it. Jude, you had a uh, score twenty two, but you had a career high seven assists as well. So how important is this facilitating for you guys? Yeah, it's definitely a player's game. And um, obviously, we didn't play our best game tonight. And we're fortunate to, to win against a really well-coached team. Got a lot of respect for Mike. We share experiences with Coach Knight. And um, saw him today at the shoot-around a little bit. And we spent some time together. But um, that guy's one of the best coaches in college basketball. You know, you might not hear his name as much as some of the other legends in our game. But he's taken multiple teams to the NCAA tournament. He's coached them on Monday night. Uh, he's a great player uh, in the SEC, and um, so we expected the unexpected. Um, you know, we had some individual performances. Obviously, with Juju, seven to one assist to turnover. Matt had a six to one assist to turnover, and that's basically what gave us a chance to win a game. Um, missed all sorts of shots around the basket. Um, we just got to do a better job demanding fouls. You know, victory is going to favor the most aggressive team, and tonight, I, I don't think we shot a free throw. The stat sheet says five or six, but I, I don't remember any free throws until until the end when Al hit a couple. So that's a problem, and uh, that right there tells you who the most aggressive team that you know they were. You know, if you get two teams being aggressive, uh, then it comes down to the team with the fewest mistakes, and we had a lot of those too. You know, leaving three point shooters. Um, I thought we fouled way too much in the second half, and it's just things we got to learn from. Uh, you know, that clock starts ticking down. You still you feel the pressure of we got to get this done tonight. But when that other team's in a bonus, it makes it very difficult because you're trying to play very hard. You want to be aggressive, but you can't foul. I thought they did a great job getting to the free throw line in the second half. And I have no complaints of the officiating from where I was sitting. They were the most aggressive team. They deserve to get more free throws than us tonight. So we got to keep working on that, um, and we will. Chris, through three games, what are you seeing uh, with your offense evolving? I know it's only three games, but what have you seen so far? Yeah, we, well, we've played the majority of uh, zone offense this season, and um, you know we've gotten we've gotten some good things done. But like like tonight, I mean, we shoot almost fifty percent from the floor. We shoot fifty percent from the three, but we don't get to the free throw line, and we get out rebounded again. And so, you know, offense comes in different ways. Offense isn't just coming down and making every shot. It's can you get to the free throw line? Can you get an offensive rebound and get an extra possession? But obviously, right now our rebound is an issue. Um, we got out rebounded again tonight. It's been a focal point of practice. It's been a focal point of individual player meetings. Um, we just got to get better. There's, there's no, there's no secret. We just got to keep working on it, and we will. Any more questions for coach? Uh, if you guys can help us out with the, put my marketing hat on here real quick. Take a deep breath here. Uh, Friday night, Tad Pad game. Uh, special thing. It's, um, we're, we're honoring. One of the all-time greats, Coach Evans and his wife, is coming back. He's a Hall of Fame coach here, took teams to the postseason, had great players. I believe he was the head coach here six years, if I'm not mistaken. All the players and assistant coaches and managers that played for him have been invited back to Oxford. So we celebrate Coach, his family, and all those Ole Miss teams. And the tap pad means a lot to a lot of people, so we're excited to, to play this throwback game. 8 o'clock tip on Friday uh, because the Grove opens up at 7, so the plan is for everybody to get their spot in the Grove and come over for the game. Um, it's nearing a sellout, uh, but it's not a sellout. So if you guys wouldn't mind putting that out tonight and tomorrow, there are tickets available. And then certainly encouraging the students to come to the game too. Um, but I appreciate y'all's help promoting the tab pad. We we hope it's a game uh, that, that brings a lot to the program, even outside of the game. 
Um, Ole Miss has a lot of tradition with, with great coaches and great players and great teams. And one of our objectives year one is to get everybody back under the umbrella. Um, so this is the first coach and first era of Ole Miss basketball we honor, and we look forward to doing this in, in future years as well. So thank you for helping us promote the Tad Pad game on Friday night. Thanks.